Hi, my name's Tom Lonsborough. I'm the Ableton Certified Trainer here at Manchester MIDI School. And in this video, I would like to take you through some of the workflow improvements made available to Push One since the release of Ableton Live 9.5. Those of you that follow Ableton's movements will have seen that today they have released Push Two with a nice pretty color screen and the ability to be able to record and manipulate samples using the Push interface. Uh, those of you that own Push One, don't despair because a lot of that functionality, not all, but a lot of it, is also available with the Push One unit. And um, <clears throat> Ableton have said that they're going to continue to support Push One and make little tweaks and updates here and there for that. So, not to worry. So, first things first, I've just loaded up a new Ableton Live set. I'm just going to browse for a device. Now, if we scroll right to the bottom, first of all, you see that we can actually now select plugins, so audio units and VSTs. This is always something that was lacking um, from the initial introduction of Push One, but now you can directly access all your favorite VSTs. So for example, let's go audio units, let's go Archeria, and you can see I've got the mini Moog available there. Um, next up, if we just go for a regular Ableton Live, instrument preset, you can see there that now we can audition just like we can do directly in Ableton, Li Ableton Live's browser. We can audition the presets uh, and that's where this little button here comes in. So if I just press that, we won't get the audition. If I turn that on, we will get the audition. Just a little mute button there. Thirdly, you will notice that now uh, we've got access to places. Now places in your browser gives you access to uh, any packs that you've got installed. So the core library plus anything that you've downloaded extra comes with your copy of live. It also allows me to access rather fantastically samples. So I've got a folder here and you see in capital letters here, I've got something that says samples. I've added this to the sidebar. This is a samples folder that I've just got stored on my on my Mac. Um, so if we just have a look for, let's have a look. Now, um, this is just like a, you know, file hierarchy, a tree system. So once I get over to the right hand side, I can press the button that points to the right to dive further into the folder. So if I go for say drum loops, and now it's prompting me to go over to the right, so press the right hand button. And now I can start to audition some loops. When I find one that I like the sound of, and just drop that in. Now let's come out of browse mode. Now, just as we've pushed to, what's happened here, when I load the sample into my live set, it's been loaded into an instance of the new Simpler device. So we'll, we'll look at that in a separate video. Uh, the Simpler device is, is what uh, powers the, the ability to be able to load samples using push. Now the new device, new simpler device, it allow you to play different pitches of your drum loop and the sample will also, uh, if it's a short well cut loop like this drum loop that I've just used here, um, it will be synced up to the tempo of your project. So although that sample was recorded at, I think it was 100, 110, it's playing back at 128, so I could just slow it up down if I wanted to play that at its original tempo. There we go. So the thing to remember here is the note C3 will trigger the sample back at its original speed, sorry, its original uh, pitch. As I just said, the speed you know, by default, it will now warp the sample to get it to play back in sync with the rest of your project. So in this respect, leaving it in C major as a default means that this button here 
this pad will trigger the sample at its original pitch. Which brings me on to the next enhancement. Another little gripe was that um, between sets you couldn't save the scale that you were in, and now you can. When you save your live live set, so we've set that to G minor, press save. Next time we load this particular live set, it'll have remembered that we're in G minor. Okay, so how would we record that as a drum loop? Well, what we would do, uh, let's just hold fixed length. So I'm going to record onto a fixed length of one bar. I'm going to turn the metronome on. Let's just hit the session arm button. Let's just quantize that. And there we go. So now if we go over to session, you can see it's as if we've loaded that sample in as just an audio clip. So it's just a little workaround which means that, you know, you, ha you don't have to look at your computer screen as much. You can just record a little MIDI clip to trigger that from within the simpler. So we looked at three things there. The first one is the ability to be able to audition uh, Ableton Live instrument presets. You can also audition your audio samples. The second thing is you can directly access uh, any audio unit VSTs that you've got installed on your system directly now rather than having to load them into a rack and save that rack first. And thirdly, you can work with samples directly from Push using Push One. Uh, when you load a sample, it's loaded into an instance of the new Simpler. Uh, you've got, you know, all the sound shaping possibilities like uh, envelopes, LFOs and filters. And then you can also quite coolly play polyphonically as well, um, whilst the sample stays in sync with the rest of your project.